The baby goes on a homophobic rant at the Rolling Loud concert and also pulls out Tory Lanez right after Megan Thee Stallion's performance. Plus, BTS's Jungkook's recent interview has a lot of fans feeling worried. Hey guys, this is Teen T, the show where you can get the latest news about the hottest celebs plus a little bit about what's going on in the world. If you are new here, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn that little notification bell so you can be notified when I make new videos like this. Also, comment down below what you guys think I should talk about next. Any more tea that I do not know about? Let me know. Let's get right into the video. So, the baby has kind of been getting a lot of slander lately with a few things, but two days ago, he had did a performance at a Rolling Loud concert with a few other artists. And let's just say many were not happy. When he was performing, he had what the public is saying, went on a homophobic rant. He also made a few comments about people with HIV and AIDS, which you know is a deadly disease. And the way he was talking was just very inappropriate. Take a look. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks, put a cell phone like in the earth. Lady, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone like in the earth. Fellas. Lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking this dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone like Let's in the Let's be real about this Yeah, keep it real. Some of y'all are suspect as a motherfucker. Let's be real. That, just no. And also, he got a shoe thrown at him. Yesterday, the baby had made a few tweets and videos addressing the situation. In the Twitter post, he says, I tell fans to put a cell phone light in the air, y'all start a million man march. I told you, y'all digested it wrong, but I ain't gonna lie, I'm impressed. Now show the same amount of support when a racist cop killed one of our black aides. Y'all not. He says in another tweet, anybody who done ever been affected by AIDS or HIV, y'all got the right to be upset. What I said was insensitive, even though I have no intentions on offending anybody. So my apologies. But the LGBTQ community, I ain't tripping on y'all. Do you. Y'all business is y'all's business. Billboard had also posted an article saying the baby apologized to anyone affected by AIDS or HIV for his insensitive words at Rolling Loud Miami, but he still blames his critics for misinterpreting the rest. Not you using black injustice as a gaslighting tool. Straight black men do it all the time. They hide behind racism to deflect accountability. This is so embarrassingly incoherent, I don't even know what you're trying to deflect with. You are wrong to stigmatize people living with HIV, AIDS as less than and dirty. That's it. Don't belittle what others fought to overcome. Otherwise, carry on, young man. Why are you bringing up police brutality to deflect? Very strange. There are hundreds of thousands of people fighting for black people's lives every day, helping and doing more than you ever will do. Trying to deflect the homophobic, misogynistic blame towards another systemic issue isn't going to do this situation any better. If you homophobic, just say that. You typed this and thought it made sense? When a black man is killed by police officers, black women and black LGBTQ people are always sounding the alarm, retweeting news, rallying folks, protesting, etc. But here's the truth. People like the baby do not deserve our support. They hate us and we need to leave them where they are. Straight black men like the baby will disrespect black gay people and women he performed with a man who shot a black woman on stage, then turn around and demand we help them. We not. Never liked him. He only got famous because of the memes. Let's be real. I don't know where he came from and only heard of him because of the memes and the trash app TikTok, so safe to say he's an overused TikTok rapper. He's just trying to keep his dying music career relevant before he becomes a washed up former star in 10 years. He's trying to remain relevant after the the baby convertible meme became unfunny. Dua Lipa even came out about the situation as well. The baby was featured on one of her songs called Levitating and she had went to Instagram to say this. I'm surprised and horrified at the baby's comments. I really don't recognize this as the person I worked with. I know my fans know where my heart lies and that I stand 100% with the LGBTQ community. 
we need to come together to fight the stigma and ignorance around HIV and AIDS. A lot of fans are telling her to take the baby off of the song or just trash the song completely. I don't think they can do that. And Victoria Monet actually made a tweet saying, if she would like to replace the baby's verse on Levitating, I'm totally available. It's internet shit one time and I'm gonna get back to giving my love to my fans. See what I'm saying? Because what me and my fans do at the live show, it don't concern you niggas on the internet or you bitter bitches on the internet. It's not y'all business. You know what I'm saying? Like what I do at a live show is for the audience at the live show. It'll never translate correctly to somebody looking at a little five, six second clip from their goddamn crib. Cause hell, I, I say if you don't got AIDS, put a cell phone light up. I say if you ain't suck dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lights up. So I could drop my next song. I wasn't going on no rant. That's called a call to action. That's what that's called, cause I'm a live performer. I'm the best. Live perform, I'm the live show killer. You interact with your fans, you get what I'm saying? Look, all the lights went up, gay or straight, you wanna know why? Cause even my gay fans don't got an AIDS, stupid. They don't got AIDS, my gay fans, they take care of themselves. they ain't going for that, they ain't, they ain't no nasty gay niggas. See what I'm saying? They ain't no junkies. You know what I'm saying, on the street, the hell you talking about nigga? Then I said, if you ain't suck in the rolling loud parking lot, put your cell phone light up. You know what my gay fans did? Put that motherfucking light up, nigga. Because my gay fans, they ain't got niggas. They ain't going for that. They got class, nigga. They ain't sucking no, in no parking lot, nigga. You got to get a room, nigga. A good one. Five-star hotel for them. Nigga. Oh, goddamn. Yeah, you got to wait till they go to the crib, nigga. They ain't just going to be out here just doing no anything. Yeah, if they a fan of me, they got them. They on some big dogs. Shit, we ain't just going for nothing. But on to the next thing that happened. He was the one who had brought Tory Lanez onto the stage. If you do not know, Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez have this whole controversy where he shot Megan Thee Stallion in the foot, which there are still some people who don't believe her. And also, as you all know, Megan Thee Stallion and the baby have worked together on a song called Cry Baby. And people feel like this was very shady, the way that he introduced him on stage and that he's still um, associating himself with Tori. And so a lot of people just feel like he's just being shady and a bad friend to Megan Thee Stallion. But on to the next subject, a lot of armies are feeling a certain type of way about Jungkook's recent interview that he had with Weverse Magazine. In the interview, he goes deeply into his deepest thoughts and how he views himself and his work. And it's just very touching, but also kind of having people worried because it seems that he's just always so hard on himself and like he doesn't really give himself a break. You can tell that he really, really challenges himself and just works harder and harder to be better than he is. Here are some things that he and the interviewer talked about. Butter has been at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart for six weeks straight. This interview took place on July 12th. Jungkook says, I was never attached to rankings, but as good as it is and as happy as I am since we've kept setting records since Dynamite, it also feels like a burden. The interviewer asks, is it because you've been successful beyond anything you could have imagined? Jungkook responds with, sort of. A huge number of people have given me recognition, so I've been going along thinking I have to work harder. But we did even better with Butter than with Dynamite, so I think I ended up feeling weighed down. That's what I'm like. BTS is an amazing team, but maybe my problem is that I'm not able to keep up with BTS. After Dynamite became number one on the Billboard Hot 100, it's not like we're being forced to try harder. It's just my personal ambition. I think I can do better. The interviewer asks, why do you think Dynamite wasn't as satisfying? Jungkook says, because I couldn't express everything I wanted the way I wanted to. When I listen to the remixes, I think about how I could have sung it differently. Like, oh man, if only I could do it again, laughs. I got some things from singing Dynamite, like I'm not quite there yet, so I try to practice singing at least an hour every day, no matter what. Any singer who's been at number one on Billboard for six weeks had better be really good at singing. That's what I think. 
I don't think I've ever imagined defining myself as a certain type of singer yet. Because it's an ongoing process, when I can prove myself, then bam, I give proof and become a truly influential person, only then I can go around saying, this is the kind of singer I am. For now, I don't have anything, I guess you could say substantial, to show off. I think even if I'm a part of BTS and tour stadiums, does that automatically make me better than other artists? And then, by thinking so, I center myself again. The interviewer then asks, couldn't you be a little softer on yourself? Jungkook says, no, I have to think about the future many times throughout the day. For example, sometimes I spend a whole day doing whatever, but whenever I do, I regret it severely. So I promise myself that I'll get this and that done. That's how I live, because if I don't think that way, I won't jump into action to get anything done. It's like the title of our song, Life Goes On. The treadmill just keeps on going and we're on it, so I th always think I'd better not ever stop. I can express myself better if I think while I talk, and I can organize my thoughts while reflecting back on what I said. I try to think about everything in that way. I think I need to improve, whether it's at singing or my hobbies. More than now, better than now. Are you doing particularly well with any of your hobbies these days? It seems like you got a little better at painting, judging by your vlog. I'm actually not good at learning things. I just like to do what I like to do and I naturally learn from the people around me, I guess. And I think the things I really want to learn are still the same. Singing, English, exercising. The concept for BTS 2021 Muster was similar to being in a concert with an audience. It must have made you think of ARMY even more. I'm seriously good as long as I can perform. I can put on more and more concerts in the space of a year if we're touring. I felt it more profoundly this time since we couldn't perform with an audience. Wow, I really took things for granted all this time. I should have done more. Is there anything about yourself other than your work or concerts that you want to show ARMY as an individual? I want to show them that just my real self, John Jungkook that I'm fairly easygoing, very honest, and nothing special. What kind of person do you think you are now? I'm a lazy person, laughs. The interviewer then says, you're being very hard on yourself. How could you be lazy if you're a part of BTS? Jungkook responds with, no, I really am lazy. If I were alone, I'd probably miss a lot of my appointments, but I have to avoid making any mistakes when we function as a group. I'm really lazy and oh, I overthink things sometimes. I think more than people might expect, and I do things my way. Plus, even though I don't care what other people think of me, I kind of still do. I have no idea. I'm sort of goofy, but I'm also trying to live a full life. I'm that kind of person. You know, a lot of fans just want him to know how great he is and that they appreciate all the work that he puts in because as you can tell, he has all these deep and complex thoughts about everything that most people wouldn't even think about. And that's one of the things I really, really respect about him because, and about BTS in general, because they are very, very humble people. You know, they stay humble. They're those type of people who's just like, there's always room for improvement in which they're always making the time to improve themselves no matter how good they are. And they don't really put themselves on that high, high pedestal that most fans do, even though they've done some pretty extraordinary things. Everyone just wants to make sure that he knows how great he is and how much value he has. We want him and BTS to be able to know, take a break, you know, like don't be so hard on yourselves. But you know, that they're just human. Humans do it to themselves all the time. You know, people, even though people are confident, there's always something that people want to change about themselves or be better at. So really some of the things that he was talking about in there is just him being, a, being human. Can't really blame him for that. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section. Once again, don't do not forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the little notification bell so you can be notified when I make a new video. And I will see you guys in the next video.